Welcome back to part two of I Catch Killers with Graham Henry, former notorious underworld figure. Well, that's one thing that we can call you. We can call you lots, lots yeah, of that's things, right, but we'll, yeah. we'll settle with that one, we'll for, settle with that one. For, uh, for part two. We're going to be talking about some uh, heavy stuff now. And I, I again, and in the times that I've met you and the, the conversations we've had, I know that you look back at your life and yeah. uh, there's a message that you want to put out and it's something that's in your book. And I'm just going to read it out a quote on that and yeah, not, right but then we can uh, talk about that. Yeah. I hope if a few young louts read my book, it will turn them off ever living in the world of crooks. I've made some great friends, but I've also met some real low-life scum. Believe me, in the fast lane of organised crime, the world is a very different place from where you live now. Take a tip from someone who has travelled down the hard road, pick another career. Exactly right. So you're sitting here with all the wisdom that comes yep. from living living the life yep. and uh, you wouldn't recommend it. No, I wouldn't recommend it to anybody. Yeah. You know, especially today, I mean, I'm, uh, I'd be twice as hard these days, even with, you know, all the surveillance stuff they have today. But, you know, it's just got got out of hand now. Yeah. You know, uh, shooting people's mothers, running in their houses, drive-bys. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's just, uh, I mean, your house was your castle when I was a kid. Yeah. And uh, no one was allowed there. You know what I mean? There's, there's a... When you get someone, you waited for them to leave there. There, there's a real code, and you talk about it in conversations we've had, and uh, yeah, the people I've met, and yeah, what what's in your book about, uh, yeah, what's respected in that world in in the era that you grew up yeah. in, and that uh, yeah, you got to be willing, you got to be able to hold your hands up, yep. and you got to be staunch. And, That's right. Uh, there and, and like, don't ever touch your mates' girls. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah ba- basic right. rules like that, but yeah, simple little right. rules like that, and that's right. you, you break that code and you suffer the consequences. Break it, you'll, you'll suffer badly. Yeah, yeah, you know, especially especially when you're in in that life in the organised crime world. Yeah, you yeah. know, and uh, you know, so I was always held in in, in high regard, uh, and uh, you know, it's even been written about. People have written things that you know. That how staunch I was, and I was. Uh, I, that was one thing I, I carry with pride that I, yeah. you know, I was never a rat, and uh, the police wouldn't even bother asking me questions. They learnt early in my life, you yeah. know, not to ask me nothing. I've been thrown out of police windows, yeah. you know, two stories, yeah, and um, you know, and then just uh, told them to get dumped. But uh, you know, I would rather punch on with them and just. But I'd just sit there and just they, they wouldn't even question me, yeah, even yeah. if it was the armoured. Uh, uh, you know, when they were tra- chasing me for armoured truck robberies, yeah. they uh, they just throw me in the corner and bloody, well, nope. just leave me alone and go and try and work work on the others in my team. Yeah, well, there's know no point. I, mean? I, I know from a cop's point of view, there's sometimes there's, a, there's no point in banging your head up against a brick wall. There's some people you know are not going to talk. Exactly gonna, right. Not going to talk. Yeah. And look, it's a code, and, uh, uh, and I don't want people to misunderstand this when I, when I say this, but... I don't necessarily agree with your code, but I can respect your code. Like yeah. if, if we've got yeah. different codes, and I, I can respect that. And when you talk about, uh, yeah, loyalty and, and sticking up for your mates and, yeah. and that type of thing, I do do understand where you, you're coming from. But, I mean, it was even a thing ingrained in us when we were kids. I mean, if you ratted on your sister over something, you didn't, do you, it. you didn't do it, you got flogged for it. Yeah. You yeah. know what I mean? And they used to have that silly saying when you were a kid running around, tittle tat your dirty rat, you know, and... <laughs> Yeah. And all that sort of stuff, and you get bagged for it. You know what I mean? Because that they that was the error. You know, and you shut up, and yeah, and the police found it hard to get people that were start talking, start talking. You know, yeah. yeah. But uh, you know, I think when the drug world really come in, yeah, you know, uh, that's when things started to change. I I, I, I saw it, I, I saw it. Yeah, briefly, because by the time I was in the cops, the, the drugs were in there. But a, a lot of old old cops talk about. Different, uh, different times, different yeah. values, and certainly the older crooks talk about the same thing. The yeah. drugs, the drugs even changed jail. Oh, like yeah. it, it's it changed was, everything. Yeah, you know, um, and turned blokes out that thought they were gangsters into you know, yeah, r- run around thinking they're gangsters because they got plenty of money and you know drive Lamborghinis and stuff. You know <laughs> well, what I mean? Uh, it was pretty easy job selling the kilo of anything. I, I spent, know what I mean? I, yeah, I do. I, I spent a lot of time with uh, Bernie Matthews, but um, became good friends with him yeah. before he passed away. And uh, yeah. he's pet hate with these uh, pretend gangsters that, uh, yeah, if you want to be tough, I'll show you what tough is. Yeah, yeah, that's and, right. And uh, these people that are running, yeah. running around. But uh, 
You've got out of prison. Yep. It hasn't scared you. No. Uh, your singing career didn't take off. No. Modelling career didn't take no. off. <laughs> <laughs> could have been so different. It could have been so different. So, <laughs> life could have been so, <laughs> so different. <laughs> but you've decided, okay, well, the world of crime is where I'm going and yeah. I want to do it right. So talk yeah. us through the process there. What the, what were the next steps when you got out? Well, when I, you know, as I said, you, you meet different guys when you're in there. And then uh, when I got out, I started to knock around with a few of them. They come from around Leichhardt, Marrickville. And uh, I started getting around over there and getting around with them. And I met a lot of older blokes uh, at the time called the Zongalises and that. But, that, you know, they used to run all the, all the uh, uh, brothels and, yeah. you know, all the prostitutes and, uh, and, uh, you know, I sort of got involved with all that crew and I run around with a little bloke called Ago Agostini or Ago Canoe, uh, real willing little bloke, and uh, he ended up uh, murdering a bloke when he was only a young bloke. Yeah. And uh, he only got about five years over it. I uh, don't know how, but a uh, good, good barrister at the time. But, uh, you know, he, he ended up uh, a raging junkie and... Uh, I actually wrote about him in the book there, and uh, you know it was sad to see. But I ran around with him, and I started doing different things. I mean, we do, you know, every sort of little crime going. Like you know, we'd, um, you know, yeah, we'd do standover collections. We'd do, we'd, um, you know, we'd uh, ro- rob betting agencies. Yeah. Um, you know, um, uh, all the illegal ones, of course. Yeah. <laughs> And, uh, you know, that brought a little bit of heat because that involved the gangsters. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, so uh, yeah, well, that, that, that's, uh, and that's where I'm, I'm trying to understand that transition from, yeah. okay, you're willing and you've you got your own little yeah. crew, yeah. but you're stepping up to the next level. Yeah, that's and right. And with the next level as consequences. So, if you knock off an illegal booking group, yeah, someone's overseeing that. Yeah. And, uh, what what happens there? How 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 does that resolve? Well, well, you know, I mean, they, they never ever caught up with us, uh, thank God. But um, but uh, my first sort of real introduction into a I, I, into everything to, into that life was uh, I was actually working as a bouncer. I got a job as a bouncer when I first got married. And this is nineteen seventy. I better get this right. Uh, 1973. <laughs> yeah. uh, Jesus, and, don't, uh, don't make that mistake. Yeah, no. we'll, we'll have to edit that if we yeah. got that wrong. 15th of November. Good, good. And uh, anyway, uh, I got this job as a bouncer at uh, a place in uh, Redfern. It was called the Rocky Horror Cafe. It was just a nightclub for uh, blokes who were, were tripped and got on the LSD and yeah. had all these psychedelic lights everywhere and had old bat wing doors. It was right in Redfern amongst all where all the curry pubs were, you know, like the, the Empress in those days, yeah. rough as guts. If you were white and you walked in there, you You're were coming gone. out in a yeah. bag, you yeah. know. Um, then there was a big old nightclub just down the road and, and uh, you know, and the block was just there and a pretty wild area. Anyway, the boss the boss didn't didn't ever want them to come in there. Yeah. So I thought, geez, you give me a hard job here because I know half of them. Yeah. You know, I knew him from the Nick or knew him from boxing. Or, yeah. And, uh, and he said, uh, so he was a little Greek bloke and he was gay as they come. And he said, uh, yeah, mate, can you, can you keep all the curries out? I don't want them in because they come up here pissed and the, the people are in there are a different crowd altogether. So yeah. I said, all right, sir. Anyway, every time they'd march up from the Empress, they'd come, hey, go on, have a And they all knew me, yeah. you know. And I'd say, uh, mate, you wouldn't believe it. It's a private turnout here tonight. I said, yeah. so you can't come in. I said, it's actually booked out for months. <laughs> right. You know what I mean? So I, I was just covering my ass, you know, yeah. for a while. Uh, they tried to come in one night, a, a big crew of them, and uh, I just got a, a, I had a big iron bar up behind the thing. And I just yeah. pulled it out and just hooked into them and split a few lemons open and, and they took off. You know, yeah. they didn't come back. But, um, but I was there one night and I used to collect money uh, on the door and we weren't allowed to. Yeah. But I was collecting money on the door and the local police knew. So yeah. they'd already fronted the boss and they said, well, we want a drink out of it. Right. The local Redfern police, right? Yeah. So I said, all right. So what we used to do was do a little box up, send up a bottle of whiskey for the desk sergeant 
Yeah. Put a little packet in it and, you know, sometimes they'd just pull up out the front and I'd drop it in the window. So I'm sitting there with my feet across the door so no one can get in unless they pay me. And uh, I think it was maybe 20 bucks a head getting in. Anyway, this bloke walked in with this big fat bloke and he kicked me legs out from underneath me and said, uh, get your legs out of the road, boy. Well, he was probably about, I don't know, 29, 30 or something like that. And uh, anyway, I, I jumped up. And uh, the big fat bloke said, I oh, oh, don't touch him, mate. That's Johnny Regan. Right. I went, yeah. Johnny Regan. Yeah. So I walked straight in the, in the uh, club and he was standing there talking to me boss and giving him a rev, you know. So I wasn't real sure what it was about, but there was a couple of old gambling machines in there that mm-hmm. looked like pinballs, but they were, they were organised crime stuff. Yeah. And, uh, you know, you fired the ball and had to get them in certain thing and then you – Whatever points come up on there was what you were winning. But, uh, you know, most of the people in this place didn't play them because they were a different, you know, different, different crew. So, anyway, he's giving him a rouse, so I just touched him on the shoulder. As he turned around, I give him a right hand uppercut, you know. Yeah. I used to have this, you know, I could really whack. That was yeah. one thing I was Heavy gifted, hands. you know. I had massive power in me punches, and, and, I, and I got taught, like, Six inch punches, yeah, you know, like a just short one, bang with your whole shoulder. And I just snored him, he went straight out like a lighter, dragged him out by the head, got him outside, and give him a good serve, you know, kicked it, really kicked the crap out of him. And then I went up and got his fat mate on the government bus seat and bashed him as well. Right, so next minute the police pulled up, so they're coming down, and I'm got to give them their thing. And they said, they see these feet hanging out the side of the Thing well, yeah. I've never told this story before because yeah. because uh, Mark Chopper Reed claimed fame for it, and Chopper Reed just told he was just a a liar and a storyteller. Yeah, right. He he never fought him at all. But um, anyway, um, and I had no idea at the time who he was. But um, next minute, um, the cover said, uh, "Who's that?" I said, oh, "I don't know, some bloke called Rugan or something." I said, "He just come in here and." So I said, I hit him on the chin. I said, he kicked me legs out of the way. And uh, he rolled him over. He went, Jesus Christ. Ab-. He said, that's, um, I think it was Dave Greer. Yeah. I, he, he said, uh, that, that, that's Johnny Regan, mate. And I said, yeah, that's who he said he was. And he said, no, that he's a, the magician, they call him. I said, what's he, a magician? <laughs> and he said, I felt sorry then. I, Oh, I've knocked out this poor magician. He said, no, he makes everyone disappear, mate. You know, he said that's why he's called that. He said he's killed seven or eight blokes, one of the maddest blokes in the underworld. Yeah. And I went, wow. That's... So I thought I'd better uh, arm up here. So from that night on, I remember the next day I went to this uh, ex, he was an Australian champion, I won't say his yeah. name, went to his house and he gave me a British Bulldog 45. Right. And it was only short and had bullets like that in it, that yeah. round, you know. So I stuck it down my cummerbund. I used to wear a red sachet thing yeah. around there as the bouncer. I stuck the gun down there and every night I'd be walking what? down to that corner. Well, what I thought, well, if he comes back, he's going to cop it because I'm not going to cop one off him, yeah. you know. So come Christmas, just after Christmas, I um, I was out on bail yeah. On um, assault charge, uh, bashing up three com, uh, uh, not uh, Commonwealth, uh, yeah, Commonwealth police. Right. I bashed three of them. They attacked my brother in law, so I, I jumped out yeah. and, and hooked into them, and, and uh, I went a bit overboard and uh, picked up a big rock and caved one's face in with it, you know, and so okay. they had to rebuild his face like right. a wire. Anyway, so anyway, I ended up going to jail over it. So I got a few years for that. And uh, I, I went to um, Parramatta again, and um, and that's when I, I, well, while I was in there, it was probably, I don't know, six months into the sentence or something, I could just hear the whole jail cheering. Yeah. And I went, what the fuck, when I come out the next morning, I said, well, what was everyone cheering about? I didn't have a radio on me slot, that, yeah. and that was broken, it was up on the wall, and uh they said, oh, Johnny Regan died last night. He got shot to death <laughs> yeah. at Marrickville. Right. You know, in a lame way. And uh, that was my old mate, Stan, Stan Smith, who. Right. Not Nettie Smith, Stan the man. Stan, yeah. And uh, he, he shot him to death in, with a couple other blokes. 
uh, in the lame way they ambushed him and got rid of him on right. behalf of the police, really, because yeah. he was causing them havoc. And, uh, and and he'd also killed a child yeah. and shot one of their gang. So okay. it's Jackie well, Rack Clark. So yeah. that was a square. So a few so. things. Just on the uh, stuff that we've talked about there, and I, I just yeah. want to um, uh, um, talk about this for a sec. We're going to be talking about police corruption. Yep. Um, and this is pre Royal Commission days where, yep. yeah, it, it was accepted it's public record that yep. there was uh, a right. corrupt, uh, corrupt police. Yep. I'll balance it out and say there was some good police, and oh, I, I think you 100%. agree on that. So we're not sort mm-hmm. of uh, not saying that it was everyone was no. corrupt, but there no. was there was cru- crews in it, and the violence that uh, yeah, you towed up this bloke, towed up that bloke, yeah. gave this bloke's head in. That's the world, isn't it? Yeah, and, and that's that's, right. that's what like if people are listening to it, they might be shocked and go, "Well, yeah. what the hell's going on here?" But what they need to understand that is the world. If that, you, that, if, that's the world, man. Uh, yeah. it's a, as I say, and the, and it is that's a different world altogether. Yeah, it's just uh, you know we live by our rules, not by no one else's, not by the standard of every. And you know. I I think that's a really important uh, point to make because if people are just sitting back and thinking, is this this is what we see on the movies, or yeah. this is the the, the crime um, stories that yeah. we, we see on TV? No, this is the real world. This, it certainly this, is. This is this is what's happened. So if people yeah. people are being shocked by it, well. This is the underworld. They yeah. call it an under the underworld for a reason. They're exactly right, and it, it's yeah. a it's a violent place. So Full uh, of snakes, I just, dogs, and yeah, yeah. And treacherous mothers. It is it is the wild west, and yeah. we we're getting it from a, a a man that's sitting opposite me that yeah. lived and breathed it. Yeah. So we could sanitize it, and uh, yeah. everyone can go, "Oh, that's yeah, exciting." Well, but well, if you want to hear what the, the under yeah. underworld's about, this is what it's about. That's so right. yeah, sorry, continue yeah. on. Yeah, so. So after, as I say, that was my first introduction, really. To, and I thought, wow, you know, I've uh, knocked, knocked out the one of the most wellness parts around. But uh, it taught me a bit of a lesson that night about reputations. And I, right, and I, and I said to myself after that, I'll never ever be concerned about anyone's reputation again. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like here he was, this dangerous mother, but you know, and he's laying on he the could, floor. He could still be pole like yeah. and. Thrown in the boot, same as anyone else. Mm. You know what I mean. So that was me. From that day on, I, I didn't care if someone had well, going to kill thirty blokes. When you you reach the position you reach in the underworld, that's part of your learning. That, oh, that's bloody the up, upskilling. You know, and if you haven't got that, you know, and I, I didn't really fear death that much. I didn't really. That you makes know, you for a dangerous you know, opponent, doesn't that it? That does. Yeah. You know, and uh, and yet, and sometimes you you just gotta. You know, some people listening are like, oh, you're not scared of death. I'm not. Yeah. Uh, I, don't, I don't fear death at all. Um, uh, I wouldn't like to go now and leave my kids and yeah. all that sort of thing. But in, in those days, I didn't care. I mean, I've had fights in the prison system where I've just walked up to a bloke. I knew he was a willing bloke too. Yeah. And I'd just pull out a knife, throw it on the ground and say, here's a knife for you. I've got one. Yeah. Now let's fight to the death. Yeah. Best man wins, mate. Right. I'm not going to pull up on you. And they go, no, 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 man. Yeah. No, no, no one wants to do that. <laughs> so it's like an assassin. They, they want to sneak out. They don't want a gunfight. Yeah. You know, they want to sneak out of the bush and come up behind you and put one in the back of your head. Yeah. You know, so, you know. I, I, I understand what you're saying. I understand that. Hide well, killers. I, yeah. th- I think are worth uh, uh, a spit. Yeah. yeah. You know. It's not I don't up. like hide killers. Yeah, well, you know. Yeah, I understand. you know they get paid for it. I mean, if that's all you can do in your life, then yeah, well, mate, you need some help. Yeah, and you know it's I've mean? yeah, met them all. <laughs> I know. I know. Oh, yeah, I don't know. I have. I suspect yeah. you have. Yeah, yeah. But um, your relationship with Nettie Smith. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, I first met Ned in uh, 1973, I think, or 73 or 74 in Parramatta Jail. And uh, he was a towering big bloke, had a reputation, you know. He could fight like a thrashing machine and, you know, he was a good style of a bloke. I've got to give him that, you know, and, and a monster of a man, a oh, big boy. Mm. And uh, what, what are we talking, people that uh, – Oh, well, you know, he would have been, you know, in those days, 17, 18 stone. Okay. Six foot four and a half, five, big. you know, big boy, yep. you know, big shoulders. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, big head, big teeth. That's where he got the nickname, I think, from Nettie. From, you know, Nettie's were the horses, you know. He used to <laughs> cart right. the milk crates around. Yeah. 
but he had big teeth. But uh, I think they were broken in a car accident or something, and he went overseas and he got these other ones made. Yeah. And, uh, you know, but, but look, he, he had plenty of charisma, the bloke. He was actually quite a funny bloke at times. Yeah. And uh, anyway, I got out of the prison. And, so how – because it, there yeah. has been so much said about – your relationship yeah. with uh, Nebby and yeah. it's a complicated relationship oh, in so many ways. So oh, just tell us about that first time you, you met him and uh, like in, in prison, what the, just- Yeah, had, had no, I, I just thought, yeah, well, you know, well, I heard all the yarns about him. Yeah. I, I, you know, when you get to a prison, they, you know, blokes tell you, they say, oh, you know, that's so-and-so, that's so-and-so. He runs the place, you know. Well, and Ned, Ned and his mate Bobby Chapman at the time, well, they were the- the main blokes in the prison system yeah. and, um, you know, then there was Billy Harrison and Billy Tracy on the other side and blokes like that. They had reputations and, you know, in that system. Um, and, uh, you know, Ned wasn't in organised crime mm. then. He, he was in there actually for a rape on a prostitute and uh, <clears throat> him and his mate Chapo. And uh, then he... Um, you know, I, I didn't really have a great deal to do with him in there. Mm. Uh, you know, I talked to him a couple of times. I had to go into him. He was the he was actually the medic, right in there. You know, and uh, I uh, I went in there a couple of times with some wounds I had, and uh, they uh, he just fixed them up, and then we just I, I struck a good friendship with a, a mate of his called Steve Nettie's, who was a Melbourne gangster. Yeah, and uh, he was in for the you know, Guildford armed robbery of five hundred thousand dollars in nineteen seventy. Jesus, that's that was a lot. lot of, that was a lot of money. Shitload that's of money. About seven millions yeah. worth a day. So that was a uh, that was a shitload of money. Anyway, he got given up, and um, it, it ended up in the nick. And uh, but I got on real well with him because I, I used to box in the jail there against yeah. uh, some of the fighters there, and uh, there was a bloke in there called uh, Louis Cornwall. He was the first uh, bloke to ever fight outside as a professional fighter. Right. From the prison system. Oh, when he was, was yeah, a prisoner, well, they when let he him was, out. Yeah, so he fought under the name Lou Hurst. Right. And uh, he'd been undefeated for four years. So I trained this bloke up to, to fight him, Podgy yeah. Clark, that I knew outside. And uh, I trained him up to fight him. I'd have him in the cell every night, showing him slipping, right? Anyway, uh, come the day of the fight on the Sunday, I had a big boxing ring in the yard, you yeah. know, in the three yard at Parramatta. And I said, uh, go on, up you go. And he said, no, I'm not going to get up. Uh, so Lou said to him, come on, mate, up, up. He said, I'll, I'll just, we'll just have a spa then. He said, no, I said, oh, I said, I'll fight you. <laughs> so I, I got up and uh, I was a bit out of nick at the time, yeah. you know. <clears throat> anyway, I got up and uh, he comes straight at me and bang. Big right hand straight over the top, and I went, "Oh, you're in trouble, mate! You can't punch hard enough." So, I just I let him I let him have it. But, well, yeah. well, they were prison rapes so were made in the prison. They didn't have that real good spring to them, yeah. you know. Yeah. If they did, he would have gone. Anyway, I punched him right across the other side of the ring, and then he's hanging right out over it, and I'm I'm plowing into him, you know. But all the stings coming a lot out of the punches because yeah. because of how far he's stretched outside the ring, you know. Anyway, at the end of the day, Nitties is referring it because yeah. he'd been a professional fighter himself in Melbourne and a very good one, light, a light, Australia lightweight champion. And uh, at the end of the he came over to me in the second round. He said, mate, you're in front here. He said, just I can keep going. So the next minute, the fight ends. He looks over in the corner and Billy Tracy and that and old Lionel Potter who just died. He was about 80, one of the South trainers. Um, uh, and one of the old Darcy Dugan gang he was, an arm robber, but uh, lovely old bloke. But um, they were the main blokes that were getting him to get outside and he looked at them and they went, so the next one he, he patted him on the head. Yeah. Oh, I was filthy. Yeah. I thought I'd just flogged him. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Anyway, he said to me after it, like years later, he said, I'll give you a dud decision, didn't I? I said, you certainly did. <laughs> but, um, you know, but. Was all those sort of sorts of things. It was r real good uh, set up there. Uh, seeing Bunny Johnson, uh, like Bunny Johnson, I didn't yeah. actually see the fight, but my mate Kevin Holland, who could uh, fight uh, very well, he was a real tough bloke in the jail. 
uh, Kevin. Yeah. And uh, and they put Bunny Johnson in with him. He was a British Empire champion, and uh, they threw the towel in after a couple of rounds. Yeah. So. You know. So this is all allowed in the prisons yeah, in those yeah, times? Yeah, so yeah, yeah it, it was good, and it was a good release, and especially for the blokes who were coming from Grafton who'd been locked up up there for 12 months or two years. Step in the ring. Getting and, flogged and yeah, dashed without yeah. being able to retaliate. Yeah, I can and imagine. And they'd come back and they'd, they'd die to get in the, you know, and they'd yeah. put on the best fights ever, <laughs> you know. You know? But imagine, if we're promoters, imagine those. Oh, <laughs> would, you, have, you would have killed be able, them. Be able to sell. You know, you'd be throwing money in the ring all day with be the be able to fight. S- sell that out. Yeah. Back boxing in the uh, boxing in the prisons. That's right. Yeah. But, but anyway, so I ended up just sort of getting around in that crowd in there and then, <clears throat> I started running around with a uh, bloke called Eric Honeyset, who was a, another Koori boy. Yeah. And uh, I started knocking around with him a bit. And then, then I, I went down to the uh, Governor Burke on Parramatta Road one day and, and he was out at the bar. I just walked over and shook his hand and said hello and we started talking. And he, they, they'd just been pinched on an armed robbery, him, and, and, him, he, yeah, yeah. him and his mate uh, Bobby Chapman. And uh, Chapo was locked up, but Ned was out. I thought, well, it's a bit it's strange. A bit suspicious. You know what I mean? So uh, I, <clears throat> he, oh, I forget his excuse now. He said he paid his way or whatever it was. Yeah. So he paid the cops, and I thought, oh, well, that's all right, you know. So we weren't around even trying to raise money for his uh, bail that night. And, you know, when I look back now, I think what a farcical it was. But, um, you know, because... Uh, he actually was helped by Roger Rogerson. Right. And uh, he, he became Roger's informer from that day. Right. You know, not later on after the Lee and Franchi shooting. Yeah. Uh, you know, a lot er- earlier than that. And so he started helping them and Roger got up in the court on his behalf and gave evidence on his behalf. Right. You know what I mean? And so... And, it, and is that because... He it, walked out and Chapo got 13 years. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, that, what, that's what sort of... What bit was of a taste in my mouth. I went, that's a bit strange, you know. Because a, a little bit of um, suspicion where there's smoke, there's fire. Was, yeah. was, was the, the word out that uh, Nettie might have rolled? Or oh, yeah. yeah. All over the street. All over the street. And, and you know, I I started to sort of think about it myself, you yeah. know. But then I, I talked to him there one day and he said, I just paid the coppers, mate. Yeah. You know, he said I had some money over left over from something he was doing. And he said, I just paid him. He said, that's how I got through. He said, Chavo didn't have any money. Well, that, that wasn't the case at all. Yeah. But um, anyway, uh, so I just started getting around with him a bit uh, in between knocking around with Eric and uh, a couple other blokes. And then and then he said to me one day, he said, um, I said, oh, listen, I said, there's, there's an armed robbery I said I'm looking at. Yeah. I said, um, do you want to do it with me? He said, oh, yeah, where at? And I told him where it was. And he said, uh, all right. I remember driving along my car. We're driving down near the Broadway Hotel. I can still remember the day. He had a BMW at the time, I think. And he said, well, just remember, he said, if you roll on me, should I'll kill you? And yeah. I said, well, you know, that's a double-edged sword, mate, because yeah. I'll kill you too. Yeah. So if you do the same to me, I'll kill you. And uh, that's how we, we virtually started off our relationship from there. Anyway, we, we we did what we were going to do, yeah, and um, come away with it. And then he said to me a couple of months later, he said, "Listen, I can virtually do what what I like. Mm. I've got a copper suite. I just give him a little bit of a duke." And yeah. I went, "Well, well that's all right, you know." Yeah. Uh, this is when I first started and, and to that, learn and about that, the- and that sounded believable to you. And yeah, time. yeah. Well, yeah, well, was- I knew that you know, like the McPherson gang before that, and- yeah. Had this run for years and, you know, been left alone and pro- probably killed 30 people, a lot yeah. of them, you know what I mean? Um, uh, the whole gang and, uh, you know, just other gangsters, not normal humans. But um, they, um, you know, and I knew they had, you know, so much help. So I just thought, oh, maybe it's a go, just slinging them and, yeah. you know. You know, but naturally I found out later, of course, that, um, you know, the the main bloke, the head bloke always is yeah. is always giving them something. Yeah. You know, it's you scratch my back and I'll scratch yours. So, you know, Ned was doing it, Lenny was doing it, Mickle was doing it. Right, know? okay. So, you know, 
Uh, and and know, just, I, to, just to expand on that, for, yeah. say what you're saying, for the, the cops to help Nevi, yeah. he's got to throw a little bit their way. Oh, there's, got, there's always bit, got to be money involved. Yeah. But, yeah. but he also was passing on information. A little bit of information. A little bit of information. I, I suppose for uh, a corrupt police, if you're not arresting anyone, well, you, your career's that's, going that's to be right. pretty short. Well, they, they, well they kept, he kept on getting questioned over at Roger anyway yeah, with, his, yeah. with his contacts with him, so... Yeah. He, had, he had to prove that what he was doing had had to get some you know uh, get I mean? some results and yeah. uh, and uh, you know there was many conversations that were taped and yeah and heard over the years you know um, but anyway the the thing is I didn't sort of I always just sort of suspected it yeah but because I'd never ever seen him do it yeah you know what I mean I backed him up yeah so if anyone said that against him. As Lenny's gang did with yeah. Lenny, they 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 you know we'd flog them. Talk or, to talk to us about the gangs because I think the yeah. the public understand bikies because they put the yeah. rebels, Comancheros, yeah. Hell's Angels. Yeah, with your crew, at, 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 well your your gang or the gang yeah. that you were forming and other gangs. Just yeah. break the break the Sydney scene down. Well, around that. Time. Well, the gangs in our days weren't uh, they didn't consist of big groups. Yeah, and they didn't need big groups because. We had what organised crime really is. So we had the power of the police. Yep. Uh, you know, we had magistrates on side, judges on side. We could get to politicians. We could, you know, you had to have that network. It was like a giant octopus, you know, with yeah. tentacles stretching out into every part of society to, you know, yeah. gather an information of someone so you could use against them. Or and so we had so many connections. A lot of my connections come through Paddles Anderson. Right, who, who was um, uh, really the Mister Bigger Sydney, and yep. then then Lenny sort of took the reins and uh, he stood back. But he did plenty of favours for me over the years with mm. judges and and things like that. Got me good sentences. Got me out of jail early. T- tell us how that works. Just a, a sense of it without. Uh, well, you know, going well, in the, uh, just in a, in a general sense. Yeah. Well, 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 he got me. I, I had a trial. I was uh, actually uh, 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 shot at on the twelfth of June. 1981 by the police they tried to uh yeah we'll we'll, we'll talk yeah. in detail about that and but, yeah. uh anyway i i went to jail over it and i got a sentence of uh seven years with i forget now uh two and a half years on the bottom or something and that was because paddles had had got me before because for, i had an aborted trial first yeah and then while I was waiting, I was supposed to go up before some other judge, but they swayed me in front of uh, another judge, yeah. the right one. And then um, I got downstairs with him and uh, and at Darlinghurst, and uh, he gave me the sentence. And then while I was doing it, uh, I got a visit of a couple of scallywags that I knew. They come to see me and they said, um, listen, we can get you out on... Um, uh, on a license, on a special license. Well, I had, I'd been told that on my par- par- parole, that they weren't going to give me parole. Yeah, yeah. See, so I thought, okay. So anyway, I ended up writing a letter, and I said my wife's got endometriosis, which he did have. Yeah. And uh, you know, I was playing up bad, and this is happening to her, and and it was a proper letter, and I put it in, did what I had to do, and then. Um, Paddles made sure he already fixed it up with Rex Bucket Jackson, who was a corrective services minister. Yeah, and uh, and uh, and I walked out. And we're not talking out, out of school here because Rex uh, it became it, common knowledge, you know, came unstuck. Yeah, didn't he? you know, and they put a big list of the blokes that, that had been let out. I mean, yeah. I'd I'd even gone and and uh, got a cu- couple out myself or blokes. I collected money. Off these blokes who were running off him, yeah, or running off Rex Jackson, collecting the money, they were all chopping that up. Because Rex Jackson was a real bad gambler, and that's how once he gambles, you've got him. Yeah, you know yeah. what I mean. He's so going to get weakness. used up. So he's yeah. got weakness. So, so they they use that. So next minute, um, yeah. So that all happened, and then um, you know that that's just how it, uh, it operates, you know, and you just got to. You use all those advantages to the best that you can. And, uh, you know, it was the same with the police. You know, we could get pinched for having a, um, you know, a real bad fight and someone got hurt really badly. Well, yeah. you know, they'd pull us in over it. And uh, they wouldn't pull us in. They'd just 
say you want to meet you. They'd yeah. meet us at the pub or something. We'd go down the pub. And they'd say, uh, well, we've got to pay, uh, you know, the boss of Balmain, um, you know, five grand, and it's going to cost you another 10 on top of that. Yeah. So yeah. we'd just pay them and, you know, give them the money and we'd walk away with that without any charges. Yeah. So and that's... Um, uh, we'll and talk- that was the green light. Yeah, well, and... It's like I, I sit here from a, a ex cop's point of view, yeah. and uh, yeah, it, it's public record that bad things went on. Yeah. But the extent of it shocks it shocks yeah. me. And uh, but that was the world. Yeah. You know, when you're getting politicians and getting magistrates and yep. all sorts coming unstuck yeah. because of their uh, their corruption, you made an interesting point. We we're having a chat the other day, and you said about um, organised crime. And uh, yeah, I think the perception of organised crime could be, let's say, a Outlaw motorcycle gang. Yeah, yeah. They, they got the president, <clears throat> you got the sergeant of arms and yeah. all that. They're, they're organised. There's a structure. Yeah. But your take on organised crime is completely different. You, oh, yeah. If organised crime is you got the cops on side, yeah. you got the, the courts on side, exactly. the politicians on side. Exactly. And that's... Yeah. But, 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 but once, we, once we'd been got rid of yeah. in the end, you know, by the late 90s, uh, by the 90s, uh, and... You know, there was still a little bit of help here and there with mm. a few, but everything changed. You know, everything yeah. changed. And then when the bikies were all getting all the notes, well, they had to blame someone else for being the organised crime bloke, so they threw it on the bikies. And yeah. and and that and that's my thing. I'm, I'm not protecting them in any way. I'm yeah. just saying it as it is. And, uh, you know, and so they give them that stigma. Of course there's blokes in there that run around and do things yeah. and, you know, knock other blokes and, and you know, there's yeah. always scallywags in gangs, but not all, all of them are in there for that reason, yeah. you know, and, and I know plenty of bikies that are just bikies and, yeah. and and they love the club, but they know how it's changed too, yeah. you know, and, um, you know, so, you know, they were branded pretty heavily and wiped off the, you know, now they can't ride around with their colours and all that sort of crap. And, yeah, that's... You know, uh... But, you know, I, I think the main thing that caused all the trouble was uh, was all the the drive-by shootings mm. and, uh, you know, uh, that that brought a lot of havoc well, to people and scared, you know, I mean, you're going to yeah. start uh, uh, spraying up someone's house and uh, what, what are you going to start killing the kids and, well, you know what I mean? And that, uh, you know, from, from the you're policing, taking it out in the public. From the policing point of view, when you're organised crime times, if uh, a bad guy was taken out, sometimes you didn't know they were taken out yeah. because they just disappear. That's right. Um which, yeah, doesn't attract as much media attention exactly as if you're going right. to shoot someone in the main street of Sydney That's right. or drive-by shootings. That's and right. uh, from a police point of view, and, well, you, you know the world as well as as I know it, yeah. but when you start creating havoc like that, yeah. drive-by shootings and there's kids in the house or yeah. bullets have just missed innocent bystanders. And shooting their mothers. and There's going to be a reaction. Yeah. Exactly there's got, right. to, got to be a exactly. reaction. Exactly so. right. You and, know, and, and they started shooting up the police stations. Part, you know, yeah, well, yeah, well, well that's, you know. I can tell you, police take offense to that. That's yeah, right. oh, <laughs> yeah. I can understandable. You know, and but, at the end of the day, you use with the biggest gang in town. Well, that's, you know, yeah, yeah. You know, you, the brotherhood was very strong in those uh, days. Uh, you know, it was uh, was strong, very in those strong. Days. Yeah, you know, and, and yeah, that that was that thing. I don't really think it is today. It's not much of a no, problem. The, no, it's a, a no. it's a different world, yeah. but the world's different, isn't yeah. it? Your yeah, your course. your world's different, and yeah. my world that I knew is different. And I suppose that's changing whether. Yeah. change for the better or worse yeah or, that's right who knows yeah but um with your your crew your whole thing wasn't you didn't walk around with it like you had the gangster look about you yeah. but you didn't walk around and yeah you know, wave everyone's face in it did you oh, no. like you, you tried no. to stay under the radar yeah. was that the smart way to operate oh yeah i think so you know and uh but you know um because the, ned was a bit of a prolific headline one you know what i yeah. mean he was always out there in the media so with the uh with the the gangs that yeah. uh were in how tight was your crew and you don't have i'm not asking to name names yeah but, yeah well, well we had a very tight crew and 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 as i said and i said in the book everyone in the gang that was in our gang yeah would kill you yeah you know what i mean that's what made them gangsters yeah you know they they would take out a play but the, we did the heavy crimes, you know. We did yeah. the, the the robberies. We did the, you know, things that involved guns and things like that. Yeah. So, you know, and I, I carried a gun everywhere. The police knew I carried it. Yeah. You know, I've even been in pubs and the police pulled out their guns and started shooting glasses off. So, so did we. 
You know what I mean? I mean, yeah. I, 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 I was, I could, could have taken in one of them pubs, but they wouldn't let us in there anymore. They, I think I know the pub you're trying about. to change the <laughs> change the image, change their image. Yeah. But um, you know, the place was riddled with the bullet. But um, and a lot of things happened there. You know, that's where the old toe cutters used to operate yeah. from downstairs and tell, chop off t- people's toes. Tell tell us about that because that's something that uh, people mention. That I, I mention it to some people, and they go, "Yeah, they know know about it." But just talk yeah. us through it. What? Uh, well, well, there was uh, there was a few blokes. They worked at they worked under the the, the uh, protection of uh, Fred Cray, right? Who was one of the most feared detectives in in his day. Yep, and. Uh, he aided Lenny McPherson, so he started his own little crew of this Kevin Gore and um, and then Linus Jimmy Driscoll was in it, who was a pommy bloke who went back to England, probably lucky he did, and, you know, and Regan and blokes mm-hmm. like that. And they were, um, uh, when, when that made of mind, that Steve Nitties, as I said, robbed the 500000 in 1970, which yeah. was massive money, yeah. uh, they went out sniffing for him. You know what I mean? So they got one of them, Baldy Blair, and they got him down in the uh, bottom bottom of that hotel. Yep. And, uh, the, well, it was the Iron Duke. I mean, uh, Nettie Smith and I uh, yeah. both had, had a share in it. Yeah. And uh, and uh, anyway, uh, they used to get them down there in the cellar, and, you know, that's where they got them down, extorted and chopped off their toes and so when, have to wh- find out where the money was and then they kill them anyway. Okay. You know let, I mean? l- l- listen, listen to warning, you wanted to be taken in the world of uh, the underworld. Yeah. So a gangster's made a good score, got, yeah. a, got a shitload of money. Yeah. And another gangster's And then another cutthroat, okay. treacherous bunch. Yeah. yeah. Take, take you take you down to a cellar of a hotel yeah. and uh, where's the money? Not going to talk. That's okay. Right. And they cut your toes off. That's right. Yeah. So my mate. Steve Nitties was the only bloke. He'd, he'd give them 20000 or something. They yeah. were happy with that. Do you, he ha- said, That's still, all I've do you got. have 10 toes left? Uh, yeah, he yep. still did. He was the only one who really walked away. So. Yeah, yeah. But uh, the other bloke disappeared, and um, uh, I think there was another two. But one, one of the uh, stories was at the time that uh, one of them had a tattoo on him, and they, they cut it off him. Right. They cut his tattoo out of his back. Yeah. And then put it onto a white... Uh, car, like cardboard, piece yeah. of cardboard, so it would show it, and they rolled it up, and they went around and knocked on his wife's door. Oh, Jesus. And they said, uh, we want the money out of the yeah. thing. We've got your husband. And they went. There's the tattoo. There's his tattoo. And she went, push, yeah. everything that was there, and yeah. he went. Right. And she never opened her mouth again. Right. You know what I mean? So. You know, they were, they were a shocking crew. Anyway, yeah. uh, you know, my my mate, again, that's Dan the Mansmith, uh, who I run with from 97 to 2010 until he died, he, um, uh, you know, he got rid of him. Right, okay. You so know that's... what I mean? Because they they, they, were, they were the lowlifes of the, the crime world. Well, you know what it's... I mean? When you're robbing off your other one and just skimming them just out of greed and... Yeah. You know, they're the scumbags. You yeah. know what I mean? They've got no principles. Blokes and like it, that, so. it, was a, it was a talk on the street. You guys knew who, who was doing it or oh, you making yeah. inquiries and you know. then, go, okay, yeah. that's, and there's a square up. Yeah, bloody oath. Yeah. Well, it was bound to come. So, you know, if you're going to live that life and, and do things like that, it's going to come back and haunt you. Well, you, you, you said you know, it so. earlier, live by the sword, die by the sword. No, there's that's definitely, it. that, no, that is mean. part of it. But if you're going to be a treacherous bastard like that, yeah. you'll, all, you'll always fall. Yeah. You yeah. know, and that's why I always kept my principles in check and, and there was crimes I'd do and there was yeah. crimes there wasn't. But people would say, well, yeah, we're we'll going to this joint here and I'd say, well, who's in there? Oh, I don't know. There's a family. And there I yeah. said, well, I'm not going in there. There's a family there, mate. Yeah. And kids are there and you're going to go and scare kids. Jessica said, get him another way. Yeah. You know, we'll get his money another way. You know what I mean? I'm not going to go into his house and terrorise him and do a home invasion. You yeah. know what I mean? Or I wouldn't get involved in, you know, like my old partner in crime, Ned, he'd be jealous of blokes if they if they had uh, extra money. Yeah. You know what I mean? Big, big lots of cash, he'd want to get rid of them. Yeah. You know what I mean? He was always for, he used to say to me, he said, when I kill someone, he said, I'll get lucky. Well, I can tell you this honestly, in, in all my yeah. 10 years I run with him, Ned never killed anybody yeah except i was away in prison 
Yeah. And a woman disappeared. Yeah. Right? Now, she was given evidence against the police. Yeah. So he went with someone else. I won't say his name because yeah. I don't know if he's dead or not. Yeah. And uh, they took her to the National Park mm. and uh, she was killed there. Right. But Ned never did. Ned's always the backseat man. There's a, there's you a, know, so he has this massive reputation yeah. that he killed all these people like loot and shoe. Someone else killed him. Yes, he was there. Yeah. Loot and shoe. But he was like behind the goalposts all the time. You know <laughs> yeah, what I mean? Yeah. And then, then there was one he did, the Playboy one, the Johnson. Yep. And and then they started to call Foreshore Drive at Botany uh, the Nettie Shift Drive because, yeah. you know, that, or bodies kept on popping up there and yeah. Harvey Jones and, yeah. you know, Bruce Andry and, you the know, ones there's he, probably he, another 20 out there. But He talked about. Just on <clears> uh, on squaring up, there was a, uh, when you were inside and we're talking about when we're going past the Quarrymans Hotel at Piermont, that uh, there was a, a, an attempt on uh, Ned out there. Yeah, 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 there was. Well, uh, you were inside at the time. I, I was just, just about out, yeah. T- tell us what you can about, uh, about that. <clears throat> yeah, that was, uh, uh, he'd been up to the um, uh, Barry McCann's Hotel. Yep. And Barry McCann run a legal uh, gambling operation in Wollongong and in um, uh, King's Cross. And he paid Lenny McPherson uh, a, a com to do that. You, yep. had to, you had to pay Len, otherwise you just didn't happen didn't to get the start. legal start. So, <clears throat> so um, he went there, got in an altercation there and uh, ended up punching the crap out of his uh, Barry McCann son. Yeah. And Barry McCann said, oh, I've had enough of this bloke, so I might have a crack at him. So him and another bloke called Terry Ball uh, drove down to um, uh, the Quarryman Hotel and sat off the pub, and as Ned and uh, his mate Jimmy Trainer come out of the pub, they, they pumped a few shots of the shotgun, and uh, none of them hit Ned. He got away. He galloped away like a... And uh, the... Um, the, all the pellets hit uh, the other bloke, hit him in the shoulder and the arm, and yeah. uh, they were pretty big shots, you know. They were the big. Well, uh, they're trying to kill him or? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. They went there to kill him. Yeah. But, uh, you know, anyway, he got through the break. And, uh, but, but anyway, when I got out, I said, Well, what, what's going on there, mate? I said, Why haven't you backed up on the bloke? And he said, Oh, you know, he's friends with McPherson, and well, who gives a flying ump? Yeah, I said, you know, I'm not going to be walking around with you next one. I'm the I'm the next one that gets shot. You know what I mean? Yeah. So you got to deal with it. So you know, uh, we found the bloke and you know went to the place and uh, wherever it was, and uh, I um, I walked up and uh, had a look through the window, and I said, well, he, he's right there. They're all playing cards. Yeah. About five of them. I said, right, I'll let's go. So as we get up the steps, I look back, he took off on me. <laughs> yeah. He ran up the street. I couldn't believe it. Oh, I just walked in and went whack, whack and hit the bloke and walked back out of the place and we left. Yeah. And um, he went straight to the police the next day and uh, I met him in town at the Foster's Hotel. So when you whack, whack, that was a oh, I shot him. Yeah. 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 And uh, I walked in the hotel and they said, oh, that bloke's still alive, mate. Yeah. And I, <clears throat> I said, what are you talking about, Ned? Well, he's just talking in front of the, the coppers. Right? Yeah. You know, I wasn't sort of used to that sort of shit. You know, so the, the, the drinking with the cops? Yeah, or? he was drinking yeah. with two of the yeah. main cops. Okay. Uh, Rogerson being one of them. Yeah. And um, anyway, he said, um, now, you got to understand the thing of this bloke. If he would have died, the bloke. Yeah. He would not have. He would have told them he did it, and that so, would have been the story all over the place. He, anyway. he would have told them he's done it to get the reputation, not yeah, to get the conviction, yeah. or not to get yeah. charged with it. Because but, yeah. so everyone hated the bloke. He okay. was, a, he was yeah. a menace. Yeah, you know, and, and, and a dangerous little menace. You know, so um, so anyway, he, um, uh, the, even the cops said, uh, "Well, you made him a lot smarter. His brain swollen." <laughs> You know, that yeah. was the truth. That's yeah. what one of the coppers said that day. Anyway, he survived and uh, and then um, well, there was a retaliation to that, but I, I really can't sort of go into that because I might be give, giving something away. 
Yeah. Okay. But um, well, we did. I I s- said we're not going to take you in the way. No, no, no. And, and I, I look, I'm not going to go anywhere silly. No. Well, yeah. part part of the agreement sitting down was yeah. you're not uh, giving anyone up. You're no, tell, no, telling no. this is your your story from uh, these are, your your world. And these are you know, and yeah. Ned Ned's dead. I can't hurt yeah. Ned, and, and Ned give himself up on all these yeah these crimes that he said he did. Yeah. You know when he didn't do them. I mean, you know, he served a life sentence. He just finished. A life sentence before he just passed away. Yeah, and uh, and that was for the murder of Harvey Jones, whose body they found along Foreshore Drive in the sand dunes. Yeah, uh, this is when he he'd gone to the ICAC and uh, and became the star witness there. Yeah, and um, and uh, next minute uh, he uh, the police need to square up. Yeah, and so all of a sudden they just happened to locate and find this body. You know. So I know who did it. I wrote about it in the book, um, uh, and and what transpired with the police, with the crims, and uh, to get themselves lighter sentences for another bloke to get paid four hundred thousand dollars. Yeah. Who I told you, his name's Les Motto. He used to be a yeah. fitness trainer, uh, and uh, he should never have even been privy to that. But he was there, and he knows Ned wasn't there. So, Ned never killed him. Yeah. Uh, Ned was back at the Star Hotel. But he was you bragging know. about. Yeah. yeah. But, but but he bragged about him. When, when he came back, he knew he knew what gun it was because yeah. he gave the bloke the gun. Yeah. Right, you understand? And then when he came back, the bloke just said, well, I shot him here in the chest and Ned said the same thing and that's what that's what sunk him when he, got, when he bragged to this cellmate. Yeah. And the cellmate was wiring him up on behalf of the police. That sunk him. What what was your lifestyle like at this time? And we take um, uh, what was it, eighty two? You yeah. got out of prison. You, you eighty three. Squa- eighty three. Yeah. Eighty three. You squared yeah. squared up with the um, uh, persons that's had a shot at Ned. You got your gang running. Yep. yep. What was your? Tell us your. What's a nine to five of a, a gangster? Oh, well, you know we we, we might have you know committed a robbery by, by eight o'clock in the morning. Yeah. You know what I mean? So. Then it was back, count up the bugs, and then uh, go and get changed. And uh, you know, I mean, I was I actually moved up the coast yeah. at that stage, you know, get my kids away from Sydney. And then that way, I wasn't on call, you know, twenty four seven. Yeah, you know what I mean. So I, I needed a break. So Ned was up there, I was up there, and the rest of the gang were down here. Yeah. So you know, and when I say the rest of the gang it wasn't. We didn't have big numbers. As I said, we didn't need them. Kept it tight. You know what I mean? So it was a tight-knit crew, and uh, they do what had to be done while we were away. Yeah. And uh, then we'd come down Wednesday and Thursday, and, you know, I might go out and go, right, oh, well, there's nothing on this week. I'd go out and I might drive out to Lane Cove where the um, armoured trucks used to ride from. So and, you're doing your wrecking. Yeah, so yeah. I'm driving around, I'm follow, I'd am follow. i follow them. Yeah. I'd yeah. follow them all day doing my homework. Yeah. And I'd look at the tins. I could nearly tell by the tins. The way what, they carry? Or, yeah, yeah. You know, what was in them or, you know. I could think, you know, that's about 30 grand, that's 15, uh, probably 100 in there, yeah. 200, 500, right? Yeah. So you could tell. So you, know, you just tag them on their thing. If they didn't have big ones, you'd follow another truck. You'd know by their numbers. Right. You know what I mean? So you'd just tag them, you know what route they were on. And uh, then we'd just, you know, and, like, and we didn't pull up in balaclavas and stuff and yeah. and, and and do robberies that way. Like, you know, we'd have beards, we'd have, uh, you know. Yeah. I mean, and the best uh, description ever given to me that I was um, uh, about 55 of German appearance. <laughs> so, you know, <laughs> that, was a, that, that you, was a classic. How'd you pull that one? Well, I've got no idea. But... Uh, <laughs> Yeah. That uh, that come from some Irish bloke who was sitting there, and he <laughs> said, uh, "All I seen was a big machine gun." <laughs> he said, and I turned around, bedded up my hook, and threw it back, and he said, "Just kept fishing," right. and that was Cockatoo Island. Right. Tell tell, uh, uh, tell us that uh, that job. No, well, Cockatoo Island. I, I was just happened to, uh, as I say, sometimes I like to just go and meditate, and that. Yeah. And I had nothing to do this morning until a bit bit in the afternoon, so. I drove down to uh, Woolwich, and I was just sitting sitting on the um, on a, on a park bench there, just up from where the wharf is, that goes over to Cockatoo and and into Sydney. You know yeah. the ferries all pull up there and that. And uh, I was just sitting there, and next minute up pulls his van. Now jump this another car pulls up beside him. This bloke jumps out. This 
massive big gun on strap to it. Yeah. Must have been a big three five seven, you know, strapped to his leg like wide up. And a big fella. And he got out and I'm watching him and then out come this big tin, you know? Mm. And then over came this boat from Cockatoo. Right. They put it on the boat and they all went over there and, and they come back. So you you you're sitting there meditating. Yeah, you, I'm sitting there just it, having you've... a you know, think to myself about things and a bit of meditation. And um, next minute that turned up then... and well that's okay. a nice little good yeah. spot. So anyway I uh went back there a few times. I never told anyone for a long time and I, I, yep. I just kept watching it, watching it. Then I did a bit of homework with a bloke I knew worked there. Yeah. And uh, and he said, oh, there's about 780,000 there. So I said, oh. So because they used to pay naval as well there and and uh, as well as the workers, you know, yeah. that did all the shipwright stuff. And uh, so I actually went to Ned and I said, listen, you know what, you want to do something with me? Just after I'd left his, left his company. Yeah. Right? I left his company in 85 after running with him for 10 years. Yeah. But um, I actually got there and I took I took him over there with me and then he said, yeah, okay, but what about we use this ex-detective, right, who used to be in surveillance all the time. Yeah. And uh, we'll use him. He's pretty willing. And I went, no, I'm not doing one with a cop, mate. Mm. Simple as that. So uh, that was the end of that. I said, no, leave it with me. And I said, I'll have a think about it. Anyway, I didn't. By that time, I grabbed this other crew and I started to work with this other crew and I stayed with him for years and uh, until I ended up in prison over the wounding a policeman. But um, the, uh, uh, what was I going to say? Uh, You've taken it to Ned. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So next minute, I, I was sitting there one day, and next minute I saw him come down with his his new mate. He was knocking around with, yeah. and I went, "Oh, he's, he's going to try and get under my yard here, outsourcing." Yeah. So I went and grabbed the crew, and I said, "We're going this week." Right. You know what I mean? No more looking, because I, I like to. Because sometimes they change, you yeah. know. So I, I like to watch them for a while. Yeah. And uh, make sure enough and did, or there was no one on it, you know. And uh, so we just turned up, turned up as painters. We all had wigs on and beards, and um, you know things like that. And we we're painting the wharf. So this is, this is and like a, that's like a scene from a movie you, you see with yeah. doing the school. This is what happens. Like, yeah, yeah, To give people an understanding, yeah. you, you're there. Okay, yeah. this is a job. Job. I got on. I got a utility just parked. Up and it was in the bus zone. Yeah. Anyway, the police come down and they said, Who owns the car? I said, I'd do a mutt. Oh, right. So you're not German like, anymore. Yeah, you're like Italian. I'm Italian. Yeah. I've gone to an Italian. So I've gone, I uh, oh, just to move it now, mate. I drop off some paintbrushes. And all right, mate, we'll just move it. The bus comes around. Yeah, good as gold. Yeah. Off they drove around the thing. So I drove out and followed them, make sure they got it because there was only one road out of yeah. out of Woolwich, yeah. which comes out down to Zill, which is miles long, like you get blocked there in heartbeat. Yeah. So and it had to be a smarter way out of there. So I found out that there was a flight path in one area of Lane Cove River. Yeah. And so I got a boat and put the boat there and uh, we found an old boat shed and uh, that's where the car was going to go. And then we're going to up in the boat and just go the other side, then put a stick on the accelerator and just send up the river on its own. Right. And we were gone. We're in another suburb, you know. Okay. So the armor guard said that he chased me over the Gladesville Bridge. So I said, I don't know who he was chasing, but lucky he didn't catch up with the poor bastard. <laughs> you know <laughs> yeah, what I mean? It wasn't even. wouldn't have been the wrong yeah. bloke. Yeah. But um, so anyway, so, you know, we got away with it that, that easy. But, but uh, you know, it was over in five seconds, never, ever. Ever on any robberies I ever organised, yeah, you know, which are, and I was the one who organised. Did we ever hurt one soul? Yeah, yeah. N never, never whacked them over the thing. One guard one day went to go for the gun, and I said, "Don't do it, mate. Only yeah. want your money, mate. That's it, mate." Yeah. Look, bang! Always take their, their it, guns. It, it's interesting. Lift up and, their legs because yeah. sometimes they used to have one strap yeah. all out. You yeah. always allowed amongst them. Right. They'd have one strapped to the leg or, you know, yeah. so always took them with us. 
and just got rid of them, you know. In- interesting there that you, and this is that, that moral code or moral compass that you're doing violent crimes, you've done violent crimes, yeah. but your thing was no one gets injured during oh, no, the, no. the robbery. Well, well, that was also part of the, you know, that, that green light thing that we had, that, that, that help that we had. Like, you know, I, pa- someone- I, I paid a copper out of that 10% that I had me on, on y- outside myself. Right. Right. And uh, so he got a sling out of it. Yeah. And uh, he got quizzed and quizzed and quizzed and and uh, he never, ever broke. You right. know, he was pretty good. So, um, um, but, you know, that that was just the, the error. That's the way it was and that's how it had to work and, and – if you if you went out and you started hurting people like goes on today, yeah. you're hurting people in public, where well, you're going to bring the crabs on you. So the the green and the police that you've yeah. got that will help you, will will start to get snaky on you because they'll get pressure from higher right. up. Yeah, to, to to do something about you. So so, so, so the, the rules are don't don't hurt them, don't shoot a cop, don't. That condition, once you do that, they're, they're the conditions. Conditions to the uh, no green, I green light. That's right. What was your home life like at this this time? When you do it, could you come home and leave your work at yep, work? Yep, I then, just switch off. Yeah, just switch off. As soon as I got home, you know, I drive up there around the lake. I just go, ah, oh, thank Christ, I'm here. Yeah, you know what I mean. And you know, I spent always spent time with my family. You know, always have. I've been married forty eight years, the yeah. same woman, and uh, you know. We've all have ups and downs in our lives. Uh, our marriages and stuff. And, you know, we've had some shit time, and, and then we've had some great times. You know, yeah, yeah. but on the whole, I've got I've got a great family, yeah. great family life. Got a great wife, solid as a rock. And as I said, I never told her anything anyway. So yeah, yeah. you know what I mean. I mean, she knows things through. She hadn't even read that, <laughs> right? You know, right. she hadn't even read the book. So. Uh, she didn't want to know, and she said I'd be no good anyway. I'd look lousy in bloomers. <laughs> <laughs> that's what they used to wear in the prison system. The girls wear oh, big right. bloomers, right? So, so I said, better. so I said, well, you won't be getting told nothing. Be- better off knowing. Yeah, Did where you- Ned'd go home on the other hand, and yeah. he'd say things to his wife, like, uh, uh, and then. She'd turn up at my place, and they'd go out for lunch together because yeah. we were very close. And she he- and uh, and she'd say. You know they shot so and so the other yeah. day, or yeah, uh, and it, uh, it didn't even happen. Yeah, you know what I mean. And I'd go and blow up to him. I, oh, what are you? What are you telling them? What are you telling your wife that for, mate? That yeah. never happened. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like oh, I just say them. He just always talked out of school. That's why if he if he wanted to talk about something, he wanted to always go up to his girlfriend's flat. Yeah, this uh, his girlfriend Michelle. So we go up to the flat. Well, I'd just sit there. I'd, I'd, you know, wouldn't say anything. I wouldn't say anything about crime. Yeah. yeah. I'd just uh, sit there and listen and listen and listen, and then uh, I'd just walk out of there. Then, then I'd talk. What you was know, that? I used to walk and talk. Yeah. That, that's yeah. where I did my talking. Yeah. You know, I didn't have a meeting room. Sometimes we might get in the back of the Star Hotel. Yeah. Never have, have a jabber about things that we're doing, but uh, mostly. Didn't ever like to be stationary. Never talked in my car. Never. I'm the only bloke out of the whole crew. Yeah. That that never got, uh, you know, anything brought up on the tape about me. That's discipline. You know, be, be, because I wouldn't do it. Yeah. You know, and yeah. and you had to have that discipline. Yeah. You know, I start my car with a broom handle, because yeah. of in case there was a bomb under it. Right. Okay. You know, I mean, I did things like that all the time, and yeah. that's how I lived. Yeah. You know, and it must have been for all t- the good uh, times. It was. You know, but I was well, I think I was just wired for it. You yeah. know, it just I was wired for that life. I was yeah. just when and when I give it away, I I was spoken. You pretty, would have been struggling. Yeah, I was. I struggled. It was I, like I, a football giving up his career, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like I can understand and whether it's crime or whatever yeah. that you you're driven I know by that sounds strange, but yeah. No, if if you're driven by adrenaline yeah. and you get conditioned to it, yeah. that's your your chaos is your norm. Yeah, that's um, right. That's when you, you're not there. You're thinking, well, what do I do now? I've, yeah. I've, I've rested for an hour. Where, where's the uh, exactly right? Yeah, you know. Yeah. So I I always like to be active. I had to be doing something. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, and as I say, if there was nothing on, and say money was coming in easy from say some drugs or something that week. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because you know, we didn't only did that. We did drugs. We did armed robberies. We you know dug tunnels. We you know we stole safes. We 
you know. Yeah. Did all sorts of tricks. Yeah. You know, um, uh, but so if I wasn't doing anything, then I'd go and do, do that homework, you know, that I was talking about yeah. before, follow the armoured trucks or- The reconnaissance. Me, and I'd, I'd have a little code book. I'd yeah. keep it in the code. And I'd practice those codes, practice and practice and practice yeah. them, and then get rid of it. Okay. Even if I talked to someone, if I t- talked to someone, I used to go down to Chinatown and meet the triads. Yeah. And uh, the big boss, right? So I'd go down and meet him. And I used to take, you know, remember the old squiggle boards? Yeah. Like you yeah. could write on them and then yeah. you make, make oh, them Oh, yeah, and peel, peel the paper. Yeah, and I'd just take yeah. it down and just go like, and he'd go, what you do, Graham? <laughs> I said, I'd write something on it and I'd just turn it around. I'd say, just write. Yeah. He'd go, yes. I'd, He'd look at me like that, and I'd go, <laughs> and I'd I, disappear off the page. I'm, I'm, I'm laughing because I, I, I know the squiggle boards. Way. I'd never thought about using it for that. But yeah, yeah, no, people knew that I did it. Yeah, and then, and then other times I'd just have a pad. Yeah, you know, and I'd always tear off the two pages so no one could trace it and do the old pencil yeah. trick over the top of it so it'd yeah. come up again. So I, I'd do it, you know, and then I'd just. Eat it in front of them. Yeah. They'd, they'd look up me like I had 10 heads. All them Chinese blokes in that restaurant yeah. all got pinched. Yeah. Because yeah. of that. To, all talking. talking. And I didn't. They, but, yeah. but they kept on, they were on me like the squad was onto me. Yeah. Big squad, you yeah. know. And they were trying to get me. Yeah, but they, they, they couldn't they couldn't put me there. Well, I I don't want to encourage crime, but we've yeah. learned that the squiggle board yeah. is yeah, something no, that's uh, handy, no. handy. I'm not sure if they make them anymore. Yeah. They probably do. Well, I just didn't, you know, and yeah. and that was the rules I stuck by. I just disciplined myself enough to yeah to not talk in my car, not talk, you know. Okay. No. Well. I think uh, we'll have a break now, so okay, we'll mate. end part two. Yeah. And uh, when we uh, when we come back for uh, part three, let's talk about uh, some of the high profile things and uh, yeah, the shooting of Mick Jury. I think yep. would be interesting yep. getting your, your take on uh, things uh, yep. along those lines. Yep. So we'll uh, we'll take a take a break, and uh, we'll be back soon for uh, part three. Good as go. Cheers. Thank you.